communication resources and faster and more reliable technology. Higher performance communication resources and faster and more reliable. First of all, who am I? This guy on stage. Metacortex, or um, you can know me as Danny, either or. Which, by the way, what the hell hacker community? I am the only one on the program that's using a handle. Everybody else is using their real name. This is lame. Josh, come here. I have something for you. Real quick, sorry. And I also have... What kind of, what kind of drinking game are we playing for fun? Whatever you want. Great. For you and 80. Pick some keywords. All right, by day, I am a threat analyst and by night, consultant, do pen test work stuff. I have a bunch of certs that are all expired, so don't care. Um, I like to hang, oh yay, lost video. That wasn't me. Drink. <laughs> Maybe it's back, there we go. All right, I like to be active a little bit in the local hacker scene. And uh, yeah, I speak at places. Here's a whole bunch of places that I have spoken at. I am a stage whore. I like to speak at things. Uh, Boise, and then I have ThoughtCon and NolaCon coming up here in May. So if you're gonna be out in those areas, come see this again. Oh, Open West, that one, that one too. All right, rules of engagement for today. Be super informal, be allowed to or feel free to heckle, yell, scream, whatever. I can't promise a witty comeback without some time to honestly think about it. So there's the disclaimer for that. What we're going to be talking about today, we're going to find all the stupid shit that people put on GitHub. And we're going to take it all and look at it. Oh, sorry, one more thing I forgot to put uh, in the rules of engagement. I may swear a little bit. It's no reflection on you, it's a reflection of me. <laughs> Cluck. <Yeah. laughs> so let's start this out. Let's tell a story, shall we? Everything starts with a good story involving a female. That is a female. I'm really talking about her, not him. This is an ex-girlfriend of mine that I dated during high school. Dated? No, she does not know. And it's glorious. <laughs> Oh, you wait. You wait. I'm sorry about the projector fails. Anyway, you saw her up there. So we dated in high school. We broke up. Not quite on speaking terms, really, anymore. And I need that next slide. There might be, so I won't touch it. All right. So a couple years go by, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, I get a text message from a number I don't have in my phone book. It says, hey, how you doing? That's not actual screenshot. But I had no idea who this was. So what's the first thing I do? I type it into Google. See what's there. So I start pouring through Google results. And really nothing on the first slide, a lot of data aggregator, things like that. But I get to the, the second page of Google, and there's something really fun at the bottom. It's, like, it's right there. And if you can't see it, there, I'll help you out with that. Hey, look, says Jen with phone number and mailing address and neighborhood. So, uh, yeah, her name was Jen, by the way. We'll just go back in the story and say that. So that's her. So I decided to click on it, of course. And I get this big JSON file. When you actually expand it and look at the source, that's really what it looks like. It's much more than one line of code. So we'll blow it up a little bit, see if you can see it. And if you can't identify some things, there you go. There's somebody's email address, neighborhood they live in, actual phone number of Stephen at F, uh, details about apartment size. I thought that's really creepy. Phone number, email address, and like on and on and on. There's tons of people in this. So I did some hardcore data analytics on all of this data, and I found a little over 1,800. Hardcore, super hardcore. 
So this is when I say, oh, shit, I have to actually text her back. So I said, hey, FYI, I wasn't going to text you back, but all your personal data is out on the internet. Have fun. Hey, she, some response, something along the lines of, oh, this was a file that people were using to try and pair up rooms for people that were running in the Boston Marathon when the bombs went off. Oh, that, it's very noble, very awesome, but we're years after that. And I told her, well, get in contact with ever, whoever this is, get them to take it down. Bonus, it's still up if you can find it, so have fun. Fast forward a little bit, and I'm running through Twitter, and I see this little tweet out there from Mark Burnett. Awesome local guy who I actually just met this morning. Super cool dude. And as the clicker on everything on the internet I am, I checked it out. Sure enough, they gave a little bit of details. You know, you search for WP config on GitHub and sure shit. There's a whole bunch of config files. I said, no way. So I did it, and there are. So I started pouring through them. You know, if you can't see that, there is a database password right there. I can't remember if this thing was actually uh, publicly accessible, but there are plenty of those. There we go, blowed up. So everybody who wants to get live creds, there's your first one of the day. So after discovering this, I started diving into GitHub and all its search features and everything that you can do. I learned a couple things. Everything you put in the search bar is logical ands. Um, there's you know, They strip all special characters, so you can't do things like not this, which kind of sucks. But still, you can get a lot of cool things out of it, much like Google dorking. You know, put in file names, extensions, paths. So if you're looking for a specific file that resides in a certain directory structure, you can find that, which in an example that I'll show you later, is file name password path Etsy. So I started, you know, diving. What are other fun things you can find here on GitHub? Well, there's a lot of sensitive information there. The one I just recently found and had a lot of fun with is Gmail SMTP configs that people put into things like Outlook or other mail clients. And all those passwords are clear text. Uh, AWS credentials. So we'll look at them a little bit. ID, RSA is the file name for some private keys. And GitHub returns 4.6 million of those. You know, Etsy password, 1.1K. Shadow files, those are a lot of fun. And some of the more interesting ones that I like, you know, SFTP configs. You yeah, actually log into their servers because why not? So, after looking at all of this, I decided, hey, um, wouldn't that be cool if somebody wrote a tool to take all of that? And I did. Pretty much the night after I sent that tweet, I started coding furiously in Python. And it took me all night because I'm not a coder, but. In the morning, I came up with the first working copy of Get Harvester. And what it does out of the box is you run it without any configuration whatsoever. It'll just automatically pull WordPress configs, parse them out, dump username, password, and host to the screen. And then I added a whole bunch of other features. Oh, I actually have a slide for this. Added a couple other features where you can do custom GitHub searches, custom regex on those searches. For if you're, so if you're trying to look for something within that file specifically that you can't actually drill down with the GitHub search functionality, uh, you can write the match lines to a file or you can download the whole file and drop it into a directory. Let's go ahead and uh, demo off a little bit of that, shall we? Does anybody have a chicken to sacrifice so this works? No? Damn it. <laughs> All right, so show off basic functionality. 
you run it, like I said, no parameters whatsoever, it's going to start grabbing a whole bunch of credentials. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing? All right. There we go. Everyone see that all right? So there's some live creds. Now, do I have any volunteers that want to try that real quick? No? Okay. So these are all MySQL. So you can log into, you hit uh, SQL shared 02 phpfrog.com on 3306. Right now, no. So right now, it just runs and it scrapes GitHub. So no input on it whatsoever. And what it's going to do is it's going, by default, like I said, it's going to just search for WordPress config files, parse everything out, and dump it to the screen. So that's kind of neat. Now, I have a couple other things. So if we wanted to check out, no, just that line. Check out some RSA private keys. Let me actually walk through that command with you. V for verbo verbose mode, U, it's actually going to print out the URL of a match to the console, so you can manually go there. S is for custom search, as so you're going to see file name, ID, RSA, and then R is the custom regex. So we're going to look for begin space RSA space private space key. You run that, and right now it's only going to return the first line of the match. It'll be enough to show you that we have a whole bunch of private keys on there. And if we want, we can actually dump that to a directory. So I can show you that I'm not lying to you right now. All right, we'll dump a couple. Couple, cat, star. Yay. Bunch of private keys. And I'll go over the numbers in a little bit of how many I've actually found in the past week while prepping for this. But. Um, September? Something like that? I've done a couple of bugs or bug fixes on it and whatnot. So uh, I actually think, uh, no, here, let's grab this one. This one's much more interesting. Shadow files. Hey, there's root hashes. Fantastic. And then, last but not least, let's check out some SFTP passwords. Which in the configs of the SFTP stuff, they also have a lot of publicly accessible IPs and domains. And I have verified through a friend on the anonymous internet, I have no idea who they are. They have told me that many of these credentials are currently working. Uh, one of which I was told you can get into the back-end SQL database of a leather club in San Francisco. I was told. I do not know. <laughs> I did not have access before the talk. Uh, and it's dying out. Fantastic. All right. Whatever. Let's get back to awesome. I don't know. Why am I looking for 
Oh, that one. Oh, yay. Partially successful demo. Yay! Yeah, yeah, please. So, yeah, so ironically, I am hosting it on GitHub. <laughs> and it's open. So, if. Uh, mm, I love this track. Next part. So, there's the URL to that. So, you can go ahead. It's just a Python script with a couple of imports. Um, that you'll want to make sure that you have things like curl and beautiful soup for parsing the HTML. So in the past week to see what's currently on there, I spent hours grabbing everything that I could. And those are some of the numbers of things that I have found. You know, lots of WordPress database passwords. Uh, 902 of them, the unique were actually 366. So you'll see a lot of test environments that are people are putting up there that aren't all 100% legitimate. Uh, you know, 61 public hosts with their databases exposed. I haven't yet. I was going to and I ran out of time for this week. But they are there and I have confirmed that they are there, which is lots of fun. Which, by the way, if you can find somebody's AWS token for one of their GPU rigs, free password cracking. So if you look at some of the actual passwords, I spent you know a little while parsing through all of them. You know, 197 blank passwords, which is fine if they're you know uploading sample configs, things like that. You know, pretty standard passwords that we've all heard hundreds of billions of times that these are common. But there are some that actually caught my eye that I thought were really awesome passwords. You know, true love waits, fat. <laughs> and my actual uh, spirit animal, Krieger, was in there, along with Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Noted. Then we look at some of the SFTP passwords that I found. You know, a lot of passwords as passwords. You know, again, pretty standard. A lot of Raspberry Pi stuff for you know Raspberry Pi images people throw up on GitHub. Um, and here's some of the what? what? I can, but I, I I don't know why there's ten of them. It could be the same project, multiple different files uploaded. Um, I'm actually not sure how GitHub returns that. I'd have to look into that because I haven't actually looked at any of the branch stuff. But what it does is it does the search and it takes every single item on the search and then goes through that, scrapes it, regexes it, or anything like that. So these are the fun ones. I found a lot of the fun ones were SFTP passwords, a lot of long ones, Illuminati 666. Yeah, pizza YOLO swag. <laughs> Some fun Gmail passwords. There weren't actually a whole bunch of um, unique or many used Gmail passwords. There's a lot of unique ones, but not many mass used over and over and over like password. Probably that's a testament to Gmail's password policy, I would imagine, but I don't really know. Computers in here was probably my favorite. So, so tried hard, I assume that they are not OSCP certified. Uh, derp life at one. No one loves me. Yeah, that was, uh, where was that one? Yeah, no one love me. So it's not no one loves me. He's telling people, do not love me. Yes. The which one?
<laughs> I am not surprised you know that. <laughs> So then I took a lot of the shadow files and I spent about 10 hours last night cracking all of those. And I got about 45% of them in the nine hours with a 1.5 billion word list file. You know, pretty standard, not real fun. And those are some of the fun ones. Shells was awesome. And I just got so giddy when I saw the only for you to see. There, there was just something so satisfying about that. And God, the, the infamous God. God would not be up this late. She is up this late, posting her passwords to get home. So, because why not, I compiled everything, uniqued it all, and posted all the passwords I found on Pastebin. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. So if you want to go check those out, um, they're pretty cool. Last time I gave this talk, it actually got taken down since then, or I haven't found it again. They actually had the Chinese characters for password, which was fantastic. So a couple of concerns that I ran into while running all of this. You can use a GitHub API, or you can just search the web interface but either one will only give you a maximum 1,000 results back for whatever. And there's a little support page in their forum saying they do this to keep you know, performance down because if you're returning 4.6 million results, it's going to destroy their servers pretty quickly. So, and, and how it's incremented is they actually have 10 results per page over 100 pages. So I was looking into it to try and figure out how I could get more results. And I noticed the sort by button, where you can sort by oldest indexed, newest indexed, and best match, whatever their algorithms do. So potentially you could get 3,000 unique results back. But in practice, I've generally only gotten about 1,500 when I hit all three of those sorting options. Some other concerns is they have a little bit of rate limiting that I hit many, many, many times. And that's the little pop-up they give you. They don't do anything but, you know, time you out for a little bit, and then you can get back in the game and play. The great thing about the script itself is if you're doing any kind of custom regex on it, the regex takes just long enough for you to skirt by this. So it's, it's actually really efficient. And if you ever start running into the issues where Python starts erroring out due to these, these error messages, then you know there's probably something wrong in the regex or the search that you're doing. So it's very instant feedback. Just a little bit of shout out to this guy over here who I found his you know, GitHub thing where he has a whole ton of dorks in there, which most a lot of them I knew already, but there are some of them like the Gmail stuff that I did not know about. And I think there's about 30 different dorks in there for certain different things. Yes? What is a dork? So very similar to Google dorks. So the keywords that you can use to find certain things. So if you have a moment, go check that out very much because there's a lot of good information that's not in these slides. It's in there that you can use Get Harvester to find. So. so that is in the plans to start you know, do auto searching things so you don't have to put in your own custom searches and regexes for it. So you can go like, you know, I want private keys. It'll just automatically do it all for you. What's up? That guy? I don't know who that is, if it was close. Yeah, so I actually looked at that, and that string is nowhere in the username of the email. So I, I have no idea what that's about. I mean, I have all the results. We can pull them up real quick. Um, where is my... Uh, let's 
see a whole bunch of stuff. Nope, not that one. Gmail creds. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to get it up for you real quick. <laughs> drink, please drink. All right. There. Like, I have no idea how that password relates to that account whatsoever. So I have friends on the internet that I do not know through the anonymous dark webs of the internet. And they have told me that a l tons of these Gmail credentials do work, but Google is actually really good at noticing when you're logging in from an IP address that you haven't normally logged into, and then they'll start forcing you to do two-step verification. But you can verify that these are correct passwords because if it's not the correct password, you never do the two-step authentication. So very quickly, you know, just trying it, even though you don't get into the email address, you can verify that they are correct. Yeah, that's a problem if you don't reuse your passwords, for sure. Yeah, there's, I did see one password that was 56 simultaneous exits. That was fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so if we want to like look at path, there's oh, there's the noon love. There you go. Hotrowlaptop.com. <laughs> at gmail.com. Yes. Um. And again, like if anyone wants to volunteer to try these, to let the class know whether they work or not, it would be much appreciated. I've never gotten anyone to volunteer for that. Some, some Nirvana. There's a derp life. <laughs> yeah. There's some pretty decent passwords in there. Like, and it doesn't matter how long it is if you're going to post it in clear text. Calm down. <laughs> I think that's actually a, that's probably a false positive. Anyway, any questions? More than what we've already been going over? Oh, you're taking pictures? Here, go ahead. Go for it. All day. Send pics. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That is a great feature suggestion. <laughs> um, but there's a lot more work that I want to do in, uh, in this to kind of develop the tool a little bit more, get a lot more features. Like Grifter said, you know, you can straight up tell it what you want without giving it regex or custom searches, which will be fantastic. Ah, oh, changed 16 days ago. Almost. You're that close. Keep trying. There's more in there. All right. Yeah. Um, I've seen a couple things. A lot of people like because GitHub's free storage. Bad developers are bad. I mean, I've seen full directories, like full OSs, you know, the whole file system uploaded. 
And I mean, I guess it, it's easy. You can just get pull everything to reimage a, <laughs> a system. But either that or maybe a misconfiguration that just pulls everything up. Yeah, exactly. And if we can get user education in there somewhere, I have no idea how to do that. I just point at problems. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Just have it open in a, a different Gmail account that doesn't tie back to you at all. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yes, my, my friends on the dark web can do that for me. That was on that? Yes, that was still her active current phone number. And to prove to me, what was her last name? Yep. Lean just found my ex girlfriend. Fantastic. Without any further questions, I'm out of here. <laughs>